Well, uh, just a quick review. Uh, last week, I shared that the world has drastically uh, changed in the last 12 months, like dramatically and drastically changed. And I believe that the worldwide church must reset. As the world is talking about a great reset, I think it is more important that we as the church consider a reset that we can be uh, effective, more effective and more focused in this season. And I said there's two things we have to do in this season. And the first is to re-embrace the message and mission of the gospel of the kingdom of God, okay? That's the first thing we have to do, is re-embrace the message and the mission of the gospel of the kingdom, as you can see on your screen there. Um, see, first I believe the church has to reset by recapturing and re-embracing the biblical message uh, and mission of the gospel of the kingdom of God. We have to let go of any and all personal philosophies, uh, and agendas that are not part of the biblical gospel, okay? And we have to focus on what the kingdom of God really is and how we are called to communicate it and demonstrate it uh, to the world around us, okay? The second thing we have to do on your screen is reevaluate our methods. We have to reevaluate our methods, okay? Okay. Um, why? We have to reset by reevaluating our methods uh, to ensure that we become much more effective, much more effective than we have been, much more effective at communicating the message and the mission of the gospel of the kingdom. We have to let go of all hype. It doesn't work anymore. Manipulation, it should never have worked. <laughs> Uh, we have to let go of all distortion and all false promises. Well, if you accept Jesus, you'll never have another problem in your, in, in your life. That is not true. That's a false promise. We have to learn instead how to communicate the gospel in a pure and clear and understandable and life-changing way. The church has to arise, in a sense, out of the ashes of the old church and out of the ashes of our old messages and our old methods and embrace the pure biblical message and methods of the kingdom of God so that the gospel is presented to people in, in a way that is both truth that sets men free and also power that breaks every yoke. That's the gospel. Truth that sets men free and, the, and, and power that breaks every yoke. And that's how we should be presenting the gospel of the kingdom. So uh, today I want to begin to look at the message and the mission of the kingdom of God and discover how we can become more clear, how we can become more effective and even simplify our message as we endeavor to fulfill the mission of God. Okay. So, but first, I really think we need to answer a, a really an age-old question. And that age-old question that I hear still all the time, well, is the Christian faith primarily a public faith or a private faith? Is it a private faith or a public faith? What I mean by that is I hear a lot of people say, well, you know, my faith, it's a very personal matter. And, and you have no right to tell me how I should live my faith because it's a personal, private matter. Other people say, well, we're commanded, though, to be salt and light, according to the Bible. And so we must be very public with our faith. And so the question is, which is it? Is our faith private or is it public? And the answer is yes. <laughs> it is both very private and very public. Okay, The Christian faith is both a private internal faith and a public external faith. If our faith is not, if you're in my faith, if it is both, if it is not both private and public, if it is both not internal and external, then it is not true biblical Christianity. Okay? It has to be both. For our faith to be biblical, it has to demonstrate the biblical definition and description of faith. For our faith to be biblical, it must become extremely personal and extremely internal until God's kingdom fully consumes everything within us. It has to be that personal, that deep within us, so that it consumes everything within us. But our faith must also become extremely public and extremely um, external. 
until God's kingdom fully consumes everything around us, wherever we are. It has to be both. The good news is that God has given us a very simple strategy in order to expand his kingdom both internally and externally. I don't know if you realize that. God has given us a very simple strategy. In fact, the mission of the kingdom is not only very, very simple, it is already already um, known, well known, by almost every Christian on the face of the earth. And it's based upon two very familiar scriptures, very well-known scriptures. So I want to look first at developing our private internal faith. And God challenged us to do that. He commissioned us to do that with the great commandment. Okay, the great commandment. Okay, private internal faith, the great commandment, love God. Okay, it says in Luke chapter 10, verse 27, so he answered and said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. Okay, the great commandment. So what is the great commandment? Well, the, the Bible says we are, to love God with all of our heart. That's our spiritual life, the core of our being. Our heart represents that inner core of our life, our spiritual life. We're to love God also with all of our soul. That is our emotional life and the choices we make out of our emotional life. We love God with all of our mind. That's our intellectual or our thought life, that our thoughts are brought into alignment with what pleases God. We're also to love God with all of our strength, with all of our physical or our material life, our ch our, the things we do, our behaviors, our actions, and also to love God by loving others okay that's our social or relational life we have to be God honoring in our relationships okay so um, so first our faith must go extremely personal and internal we must first learn how to love God with the totality of our lives with our spiritual emotional intellectual physical and social life you know, just think, just think how incredible our lives would be if we actually love God with the totality of our lives. And just think how attractive the gospel would be to other people as they saw it in us because we love God with the totality of our lives. Now, in a number of weeks, I'm going to explore how to love God with the totality of our lives because this is part of our mission first part is to love God with all of our life, right? But let me suggest, just as a quick aside, if we really want to develop our internal faith, our internal life, it involves committing ourselves to the, really, the, the, the historic um, di Christian disciplines, uh, such as worship, prayer, uh, meditation, serving, giving, solitude, um, and more, okay? So we're going to talk about that probably not until... Uh, middle or so of next month, but we first have to work on the great commandment to love God with the totality of our lives, okay? Now let's look at God's strategy for developing our public side, our external faith, which God challenged to do, do you know where? The great commandment, the great commandment. Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. I'm sorry, great commission, sorry. Yeah, Great Commission, public, external faith, the Great Commission to make disciples, okay, to make disciples. It says in Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things um, that I've commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even uh, to the end of the age, amen. I mean, let it be so, okay? So, now here's the problem. Most English Bibles actually mistranslate this passage by changing the tense of the verbs. Because when you look at the Great uh, Commission, it's, we think the Great Commission is to go. The Great Commission is not to go. Here's how it should be read in the uh, literal English. Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20. Make disciples of all nations. That's the command. Make disciples, make disciples of all nations. How? By going, by baptizing, by teaching them to obey, and by, surely I'm with you always, by relying on the presence of the Lord. Okay. So the, the Great Commission 
is not a commission to go, although we should be going. The Great Commission is not a commission to evangelize, although we should be sharing our faith. The Great Commission is not even a commission to teach the Bible, although those that can teach should be teaching. The Great Commission is a commission to make disciples. Do I have that in my notes? There it is. The Great Commission is a commission to make disciples by going and reaching out to the lost, number one, by water baptizing all those who respond to the gospel, number two, then number three, teaching believers to obey the commands of Christ, and number four, by relying on the Lord's abiding presence as we do so. That's the Great uh, Commission. Very simple. See, and, and, and in fact, that's why it's called the Great Commission. Okay, because it's a common mission that we all have with each other. Okay, God has given each one of us as believers this common mission, but it's also a common mission between us and the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will be working with us. Okay, it's a common mission. Um, so, it is so imperative as Christians in this season as we go forward to learn how to develop both our private faith and our public faith. See, if we only develop our private faith, we will become uh, self-absorbed and self-focused. Uh, if we only develop our private internal faith, our love relationship with God, without developing our public external faith by discipling others, we become self-absorbed and self-focused and really disconnected from the world around us. Okay, It's just Jesus and me and Jesus and me, right? Yeah, but what about your neighbor? What about your relatives? What about your workmates? What about people in other countries? Okay. Now, if we only develop our public faith, right? If we only develop our public faith only at the expense of our private faith, if we only develop our public external faith, making disciples of others without developing our private internal faith, our love relationships with God, then we'll become works-oriented, we'll become cold, we'll become hard-hearted, we'll become legalistic towards others, and we'll probably end up hurting more people than we help if we turn the, uh, our commission into a works-oriented commission. And so we have to develop both of these, our private faith, and our public faith. Now, okay, so that's the foundation. We have to work on our private faith, on our public faith, the great commandment and the great commission. What I want to do now, though, is look at the great commission for a few minutes, and um, because it is a mission for all of us, each one of us, and it's, it's a commission to make disciples of all nations. And, and, and again, the great commission can be separated into two parts, Winning the lost and maturing the saved, okay? Winning the lost and maturing the saved, okay? First, we have winning the lost. Bible says we're to be going. We're going to make disciples by going, therefore, or go therefore, okay? The Bible says we should make disciples by first going, okay? We'll go where? We'll go wherever the lost are. Go over where, wherever the Lord leads us to share the gospel of the kingdom with others. And we don't have to go far. Usually our next door neighbor, maybe our dentist, our doctor, our uh, um, baker, whoever you have, your workmates. And, and we go to the lost, we share the gospel, and we, we don't wait for them to come into the church buildings. I know one uh, church has won over, over what, it, what was it, 16,000 people in the last year even though they were shut down for the whole year. No one was allowed to come to the church building. Okay? My son-in-law, Sammy, has seen over 1,500 people come to the Lord in the last six months online. No one came into a building at all. Okay? So we don't wait them for them to come into our church buildings. So evangelizing is part of the discipleship process. Do you understand that? We make disciples by how? First, going and evangelizing. Okay? Evangelism is part of discipleship. My children were discipled from the day they were born. At some point in their lives, they made a personal commitment to the Lord, but I started to disciple them from their earliest moments of awareness. Okay? I know of a congregation whose mission statement, I love it, sort of, to share the love of Christ with everyone who enters our building. Well, that sounds really great, but that's not the Great Commission. What about all those people that never enter into the building? Are they not going to have the love of Christ shared with them? See, we've got to get out of this mindset of the building. Okay, The Great Commission is to share the love of Christ with everyone, whether they ever step foot inside 
the building or not. So we have to be going. Okay. So wherever we go, we are to go very intentionally with a desire to communicate and demonstrate the gospel to others. Okay. The second part of the, of the winning the lost is baptizing in water. Okay. Baptizing in water. Okay. We already go. We go. We make disciples by going and then we baptize them in water. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay. So we're to make disciples by baptizing. Baptize who? Well, baptize in water whoever responds to the gospel message. Okay. Um, as we, as we shared, we're going, people respond, we try to baptize them as soon as possible. If you check the Bible and you do a study, you will find out that most people were baptized within one hour of their salvation experience. One hour, not one week, one year, whatever, right? One hour. Okay, so now, just as a side note, since the command, right, the Great Commission is to every one of us, right? The Great Commission is to every one of us. Um, and making disciples is, is given, this commission is given to every believer. That means that every Christian, every believer, now no matter how old you are as a Christian, every believer has already been given permission to water baptize other people. You don't need to wait for the priest, the pastor, the elder. You can baptize people for yourself, okay, if they've received Christ into their lives. We've given, been given permission. Okay, so the first part of making disciples is about winning the lost. How? By going to the lost and baptizing those who are in, wa in water, those who respond to the gospel. Okay, the second part of the Great Commission is maturing the saved. We're keeping it really simple. What have we learned so far? Our, our, our commission is to love God, and make disciples by winning the lost and maturing the saved, okay? Those who respond pro appropriately to the gospel message. And how do we do that? Again, there's two parts to maturing the saved, okay? And the first is teaching to obey, okay? Bible says go into all the world and preach. Uh, uh, so make disciples by going, by going into all the world preaching the gospel, baptizing in water, those who respond, and then teaching to obey, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. Okay. So we mature the say first by teaching them to obey the, 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 the teachings of Jesus. Okay. We disciple the say by teaching them to observe or to obey everything that Jesus taught. Now, here's a paradigm shift for you. Uh, this is a mistake I've made for years. I'm, cl I'm correcting myself, but I'm hoping, hoping to give you hope now yourself as, as, as you listen to what I'm about to say. Teaching to obey is not the same as teaching, okay? What we've done in the previous days is we put this burden of teaching on people that don't have the gift of teaching. We say, okay, if you're a Christian now, you have to teach people the Bible. And you go, but I don't know the Bible well enough. I, I, I don't know how to teach. I, get, I, I just don't know how to do that. Right? We've put a false burden on people by telling them they all have to disciple by teaching people. No, you don't teach people. You teach to obey. Okay? See, many people feel inadequate to make disciples because they don't have enough Bible knowledge, as I said. They don't feel uh, equipped enough. Or they don't feel they ha are able to teach. And some people just are not able to teach. They do not have any degree of the gift of teaching, okay? According to Romans 12, it's one of the, the seven gifts, okay, teaching. However, teaching to obey, and we're going to talk a lot more about this, in, in, I think, two weeks, okay, teaching to, three weeks, uh, teaching to obey requires no Bible knowledge at all, okay, uh, not everyone can teach, but everyone can teach to obey, how do you teach to obey, as I said, I'm going to share a lot more in a couple of weeks, how do you teach to obey, teaching to obey is not about uh, passing on biblical knowledge to Christians, teach, the, that is the job of the fivefold ministry, right, or at least someone who has the Romans 12 gift of teaching. Teaching to obey is about encouraging people to apply Jesus' teachings and demonstrate to them how to apply Jesus' teaching, and then as they do it, to give them appropriate feedback and encourage them to continue to try to obey the Lord until they become proficient at doing it. Okay, for example, um, say you... Uh, 
well, in, too bad. In the old days, you used to have woodworking class in school. I guess you don't anymore. But in the old days, uh, you used to have woodworking class, and you go in, and they would teach you how to use a saw. Okay? So say your son comes home from school, and you say, what would you learn in, in school today, son? And your son says, well, I learned how to use a saw to cut a piece of wood straight. And you say, well, show me how he, the teacher taught you. So the son picks up a saw and he cuts and he uses the saw to make a straight line and he cuts that wood. And you go and while he's cutting the wood, you're saying, that's a great job. Keep going, son. You're doing a great job. Wow, that's a really good job. And then when it's done, you look at the wood and you say, wow, you did pretty good there. A tiny bit off. Um, you know, when I cut wood, I, this, this is the way I do it. Uh, you know, see if that works for you. But if not, just keep on the way the teacher taught you and great. And, and, and you keep encouraging your son to get better cutting wood. Now, did you have to teach him anything? No. You encouraged him to simply obey the teaching that he got from someone else, encourage him through it, and, and then and keep encouraging him to get proficient at it. In the same way in the Bible. If I were to call up one of you tonight, and I would say to you, as I said, I'm going to talk a lot more about this in a few weeks, but if I were to call up one of you tonight and say, hey, um, how you doing? Yeah, I'm doing fine. Great. Okay. What's, what, you know, you've, you've been telling me you've been reading Bible verses. Uh, what Bible verse really stuck out to you this week as you're reading the Bible? And you would say maybe uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And you would say, or I would say, wow, that's really great. How are you applying that in your life? And you say, well, you know, uh, I'm, before I make a decision, I, uh, may, I pray about it, and I ask the Lord which is the best decision to make here, and I don't rely on my own intellect. I, 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 I wait for the presence of the Holy Spirit to give me this witness inside, and I say, well, that's a really great job, and how's that going? And you say, wow, I, I've really been making some great decisions. And, and, and so I say, man, I'd like to ca call you again in a couple weeks and see how that's going for you, okay? Now, did I have to give the person any Bible verses? Not a one. You gave me the Bible verse God gave you. You told me how you're trying to apply that Bible verse, and all I did was encourage you in it. That's teaching to obey. That is so different than teaching, okay? We, we got to get this false burden off of people where everyone has to somehow pray to God for the gift of teaching. I'm sorry, not everyone has the gift of teaching, but everyone can teach to obey, Almost every parent that is in this room has probably, when their kids have come home from school, I mean, you may not know physics, you may not understand algebra, you may not understand these things, but you can say to your kids, man, what are you doing? Show me what you're doing. Man, that's really good. Keep at it. You're teaching to obey, okay? We can all do that as Christians, and that's part of making disciples, teaching people to obey, okay? And we can do that no matter what our giftings are. Okay. And then the last part of, of maturing the saved is relying on the Spirit's presence. It says, lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. Okay. So second, we mature the saved by relying on the Holy Spirit who's always with us. As we disciple others, we must do so with the leading and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. We have to seek the Holy Spirit for insight, for uh, strategy, for words of knowledge, words of wisdom, words of comfort, uh, discernment, and all the other resources of the Holy Spirit. See, and as we make disciples with the leading and empowerment of the Holy Spirit, then we can also share, well, this is how the Holy Spirit uses me. This is how the Holy Spirit talks to me. This is how I receive impressions from the Holy Spirit, okay? And, and in that way, they are also learning how to be Spirit-led and Spirit-empowered, okay? So why must we rely on the presence of the Holy Spirit? Because if we do not rely on the presence of the Holy Spirit when we're, t when we're discipling, our, 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 our discipleship will turn into a legalistic work of the flesh, right? It'll become solical, as some people say. And as they respond to our discipleship that's in the flesh, that's legalistic, they will develop a legalistic faith instead of a dynamic and vibrant faith, which is what God wants us to pass on to them. Okay, so as we're led by the Holy Spirit and, we're, and we model how the Holy Spirit works in our lives, they also will learn how to be led by the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to manifest his gifts through them also. See, so, so making disciples, every person on the face of the earth, no matter how old you are as a, as, as, as a Christian, you can make a disciple because discipling is 
teaching them to obey, not teaching, but teaching them to obey. What's God saying to you? How are you doing that? How are you applying that in your life? Well, that's really good. I'm really, I just bless you. I'm going to be praying for you. Wow, I didn't have to know any Bible, though we, though we should know the Bible. But you don't have to know the Bible. You don't have to memorize the Bible. You don't have to teach it all to teach to obey. You just have to learn how to encourage people. And hopefully, when you have the, 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 the Holy Spirit, the great encourager within you, it's going to be a lot easier to teach people to obey because we have his encouragement. Okay, so we're almost done. So, yeah, like really, again, I say, just think of how, um, just think about how the world would be if every Christian took seriously the great commandment and the great commission. Like, God distilled the whole mission into, into two scriptures, the great commandment and the great commission. I once had a guy come into our, our old church building, and he came in, and he said, uh, so, hi there, my name's, I think it was Bob or something. He said, well, what are your rules here? A a and I said, I don't think we have any rules. And he said, oh, everyone's got rules. I want to know, what are your rules? And I go, Lord, what do I say to this guy? A and all of a sudden, I got the great commandments. I said, well, okay, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength, and love your neighbors yourself. And he said, oh, it can't be that easy. <laughs> and I said, have you ever tried to do that? You know, it's not that easy, <laughs> but it's something God has called us to do, okay? And that's the first part of our mission is to love God with the totality of our lives, and then to make disciples by going by winning the lost and maturing the saved, okay? Growing into our private, internal faith as we learn how to fully love God and then growing in our, our, our public, external faith as we learn how to disciple others. That's, a, that's the mission that God has given us. We don't have to learn about all these other side issues of the Bible. It's just the great commandment and the great commission. So our simple biblical mission is to love God with the totality of our lives, to reach out to others with the gospel of the kingdom so that they would become followers of Christ, and then to help them to fully develop their private internal faith and their public external faith. It's that easy, and anyone can do it. Or if you want to summarize, our mission is to love the Lord, win the lost, and mature the saved. Can you remember that? That's nine words. Our mission, what is it? Love the lost. Win, um, Lord, yeah, love the lost, though, yeah. But love the Lord... Win the lost, mature the saved. Or if you want to put the word and in there, it's 10 words, okay? Love the Lord, win the lost, mature the saved. It is that simple, okay? This is our simple biblical mission, okay? And over the course of this next number of months and over the course of this year, in fact, my goal is to help every person watching online in the building, the, 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 sta the, the, work, the team that's here, but also all of you that are online, my goal is to help you fulfill your mission. Love the Lord, win the lost, mature the saved. And I'm going to give you such simple, practical tools, there is no way you cannot become successful, okay? Um, yeah. Everyone watching online, I want to help you to come to faith, love the Lord, win the lost, uh, mature the saved. Okay, so I want to just take a couple minutes. I don't know if I've got any questions. I don't know if you've seen any. Um, I don't really see any. Great. My screen didn't freeze today. That's encouragement. Okay, I don't really see anything. Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to wait about uh, 10 seconds, 15 seconds. If nothing, I want to move on and close. But folks, it's that easy. Uh, we got, show us that screen again, please. Our mission is to love, with, love God with the totality of our lives, to reach out to others with the gospel of the kingdom so that they would become followers of Christ and then help them to fully develop their private internal faith, love the Lord your God, and their public external faith, win the lost, mature the saved. Okay, it's that simple. Okay, so, so what are we going to do? We have to respond, right? Uh, 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 information without application is, is like the letter kills, the spirit gives life, right? I, information must have application. So what is the application? Well, number one, let's respond right now. What is a response? Let's pray for God's help. 
Can we do that? Let's pray right now for God's help. So let's do that. Father, in Jesus' name, I'm asking you to help me, and you can insert your name, or you can say me also, meaning you. Uh, Lord, help me to love. Help me to love you with all of my heart and all of my soul and all of my mind and all of my strength, and to also love you by loving my neighbors around us, around me, because as your word says, if I can't love people that I can see, how can I love you that I can't see? Lord, so help me to be a lover, to love you with the totality of my being. And Lord, also help me to embrace the message and mission of your gospel of the kingdom. Help me to make disciples by winning the lost, and, mature, and maturing the saved. Help me to go to the lost and share with them the gospel of the kingdom. Help me to water baptize those who positively respond. Help me to teach them, encourage them to obey your word and help me to rely on your Holy Spirit's presence as I do so. I'm relying on you, Lord. I want to be spirit-led as I do this. So this never becomes a work of the flesh. It becomes a passionate outflow of your spirit working within me. And I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, also, this week. What are we going to do this week? We have to apply this, right? Application, revelation, and application. What are response? Here's what I'm asking you to do. Would you please, very simple, I'm asking you, to ask the Lord, Lord, give me one strategy that I can, I can do to grow in my love for you, okay? Just ask the Lord, what is one way I can grow in my love for you, right? The great, the great commandment. One way I can grow in my love for you, either in my spiritual life, my emotional life, my uh, intellectual life, my physical life, or my relational life. Give me one strategy, Lord. Tell me what to work on this week to grow in my love and relationship with you. And then please commit yourself to do it. And then also uh, send me an email. There's the, uh, my email address, dhibbert at destinychurch.ca. .ca. And just say here, you know, you don't have to say specifics, but give me, give me the strategy the Lord gave you so that I can share it with everyone as we go and we approach that part of our teaching in, in about a month and a half, okay? Give me your insights, insights so that I can share with the congregation, with everyone watching online, what God is saying to you about how you can grow in your love relationship with him, okay? Okay, well, let's just, again, just close in prayer and seal what the Lord's saying. Yeah, thank you, Father. Father, in Jesus' name, if you have to put a hand on your head or get, the, get your spirit working in your head or maybe the Holy Spirit needs to work in your heart, but Lord, help us to apply your great commandment and your great commission. Help us, Lord, to learn how to love you with the totality of our lives to such a degree that it consumes us. And, and it becomes obvious to everyone around us that we are lovers of God. Lord, would your love so fill us and would we learn how to so deeply love you that it is obvious to everyone around us. Just like in the first century when it said the, the people looked at disciples and they were amazed because they realized they'd been with Jesus. Something about their presence, their demeanor, shook people to the core because they realized the, that Christ had spent time with them. Lord, let us be that type of people. And Father, help us to become disciples, to fulfill the great commission, to win the loss and mature the saved. Yes, Lord. Help us by your spirit to, to seal that to our hearts that we begin to do it now even this week, with our neighbors, people at the work, people in the stores, wherever we go. In Jesus' name, God's people said, amen. Amen. Next week, I'm going to share with you more on going. We're going to just talk about that simple first part, going. Okay, We're going to spend four weeks on the Great uh, Commission, and the first thing we do is we go. I'm going to talk about how to do that and do it so simply that anyone in this room could do it without fear or apprehension or anything, okay? God bless you. Thank you for watching online. Thank you, the team that's helping me here in the building. See you next week. God bless you. Amen.